tomorrow as Chicago Cubs take on the up-and-coming Atlanta Braves today at 1.15 here on Channel 9. Bring up the first baseman, Hernandez. Man on base, two out. Hernandez, two walks and a single. The National League's leading hitter, Keith Hernandez. They make a big thing out of that in San Francisco where he comes from. The papers were pretty heavy with it. Another batting champion, the first one uh, that they've had out there since Lefty O'Duel from San Francisco. That's Brock. Well, in that 3,000 hit story, uh, they've almost lost sight of the fact that Brock has the all-time record for stolen bases, too. Strike. Ball one, strike two. Nine hundred and thirty one stolen bases ground ball bouncing out to Mako over to first and that retires the side. No run one hit no errors one left so let's take a seventh inning stretch and then Jose Cardinal and you can both go after these guys score Cardinals two, the Cubs nothing. The faces of Wrigley Field big crowd big Labor Day crowd again we remind you now make it a great Labor Day holiday by staying alive. Wherever you're driving, leave early, take it easy, give yourself plenty of time, maybe all the rest of your life. Paid attendance, 31,120. So oh, the Cubs need a couple out of Aris to batter. There's a soft liner, little looper, grabbed by Templeton, who was playing kind of a deep shortstop anyway. That's one away, and Jerry Martin, the center fielder, is up. Here's Jerry Martin. Well, our old pal Jose Cardinal. Out for the season. What happened to the What happened to the hand, Jose? Well, Jack, I was playing Cincinnati uh, two weeks ago, and then I uh, died for the ball, and then I come out with a broken hand. Too bad. Sorry about that. So when I was staying, you know, it's not much you can do. No. No. Well, at least if you have to break it, break it toward the end of the season or in the off season, so you're all ready for the spring. There's a very high pop fly. Who wants it? Three or four fellows are wondering about it, and finally it's Hernandez who takes it for out number two, and that'll bring up Blackwell. Jose, were you surprised that uh, Danny Ozark being fired? Well, uh, I was looking for something like that sooner or later, and. Uh, you know, like I said before, it's, it's not done. It's hard. You know, right in the beginning of the season, we have a lot of problems, a lot of injury, but uh, it's hard to find, you know, to fire a 25-ball player. So the manager, they only want to have to pay, but it's not Danny's fault at all. Not Danny's fault at all, huh? Nope. This is Kurt Siebert. Now, here's a young fella brought up by the Cubs. Kurt Siebert. 
He's a second baseman at Wichita. 236 hitter. Went to bat 407 times down there. Got 96 hits, 13 doubles, three triples, three homers, had 34 RBIs. Hit 236. Six footer, weighs 160. That's a strike. Strike one. And he's batting for Blackwell. That's 0 and 2. No ball, strike two count. three pitches and that retires the side. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. And at the end of seven to score the ball game, Cardinals two, the Cubs nothing. Ball game is in the eighth. Cardinals two, Cubs nothing. Cardinals have five hits. The Cubs have four. Foul ball. It'll be Slayton for Milwaukee against uh, Norris for Oakland in that second game. I oh, know that's a single game. The end of seven. Yankees six. Boston Red Sox three. Montreal beat them at seven to two. Lee the winner burrs the loser. Carter got his 19th. Dawson got his 21st in that one. No score at the end of one in that second Philadelphia Pittsburgh game. Carlton and the Phillies shut out the Pirates on one hit in game one beat them two to nothing. Welcome today to WTVO in Rockford, WOI Ames, Iowa, KCRG in Cedar Rapids, Foul Ball, WDUB Dubuque, WFFT Fort Wayne, Indiana, and of course our flagship station, WGN Television 9 Chicago, where today Channel 9 in Chicago is conducting the Jerry Lewis Telethon. There's a fly ball to the left, and Kingman handles this one for out number one. Simmons is out, Scott up. So anyone who wants to pledge, just call 312, our area code here, 938-9300. If you want to take part in the Jerry Lewis Telethon, we'll have the big climax tonight at 8. Call 1. Berenger against Sanderson in that uh, Mets-Montreal second game. Ground ball bouncing out to Bittner. Close to the pitcher covering, and Lamp gets over this time. We're out number two, and that will bring up the right fielder, Jerry Mumphrey. Here's Jerry Mumphrey now. Ball one, strike one. There's a line shot to left. That's a base hit. So Mumphrey has his first hit of the day. 
And sitting alongside Enright is on the right of the picture, Jimmy Enright, the regular PA announcer, is Gene Sage, who's the PA announcer for the day. As I said, Gene won the privilege by outbidding everybody for it at the turnabout last year in the auction they had for be a PA announcer for a day. And we thought maybe you'd like to uh, enjoy a sex symbol announcer for a change. Ball one. Could have been a little bit on the embarrassing side. Five ball deep to right, and it's pulled in out there by Scott to retire the side. So Reese gave it, gave it a pretty good ride. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left, and that two run lead's looking very big right now as we go to the Cub 8 score. Cardinals two, the Cubs nothing. Steve Macko is going to be the leadoff hitter and will no doubt get a pinch hitter for Lamp. I see that Kenny Henderson has picked up a bat. And then it'll be DeJesus. At the end of one, California three, the White Sox nothing on the West Coast. Baylor got his 32nd homer in the first inning with two on. We'll count for those three. Now the New York Yankees are at bat in the bottom of the eighth. It's the Yankees six, the Boston Red Sox five. John Fulgen, the pitcher, all set. That's too low. Ball one. That's a ball. Ball two, two and oh. Brock in left, Scott in center, Mumphrey in right. Reach, Templeton, Obergfell, Hernandez, the infield third to first, the battery, Fulgham, and Simmons. That's a strike. Ball two, strike one. That's a ball. Ball three, strike one. Three strikeouts for Fulgham today. Strike. Full count, three and two. Fulgham started 14 games and has completed seven of them, which of course is a pretty good thing. That is a call third strike. Macko started down the first base. And Lonnie Harris, the plate umpire, had different ideas. Fulton beat the Cubs 3-2 at St. Louis, you know, the last time we were down there. Here's Ken Henderson batting for Lamp. Boy, that Sutton got a cute third strike past him the other night at L.A. Ken hitting. Henderson, 264 hitter for the year. Ken takes it for ball one. Well, among the groups here, we have a group from the uh, Fort Madison, Iowa, Evening Democrat up here in the press box. Uh, the Force Department is pretty, uh, pretty slim right now because they're all over here. Al Schultz, Dick Birch, 
Rick Fleckenstein from the Fort Madison, Iowa Evening Democrat. Ball two, no strikes. That's a strike. Ball two, strike one. And Henderson is not very happy with that call. I can't say I blame him too much. That's a ball. Ball three, strike one. The Cubs need a couple desperately. Fly ball, left field. And it's caught by Lou Brock. Running in and running hard. Let's get Lou isolated on this one. So that's out number two, and that'll bring up the shortstop to Jesus. Here's a strike, strike one. Two out. When we saw Fulgham at St. Louis, I remember Lou remarking about how this guy looked like a real comer, a real prospect. Throws hard, good control. Breaking pitches appear to be under control. That was high. Ball one, strike two. Too close. Two and two. Toronto and Baltimore are in the 10th inning, tied one to one. Foul ball. Well, among the men the Cubs have brought up today are Pagel, who hit 39 home runs down there at Wichita. Ron Davis, third baseman. Pagel's a first baseman outfielder. Siebert, a second baseman who pinch hit. Dave Geisel's back up again. He had a five and five record this year. Down ball taken by a third baseman. Can he reach the throw? And De Jesus is out. And they've also brought up Riley. And the Cubs are down in order again. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. At the end of eight, it's still the Cardinals two and the Cubs nothing. At the end of two, Pittsburgh won, Philadelphia nothing in their second game. Final, Cleveland four, Detroit three. Wise the winner, Morris the loser. Andy Thornton homered in that one. That's a ball. For the Chicago Cubs, Kingman, Martin, Thompson, and left center and right. Oliveras to Jesus, Mako, Bittner, the infield third to first, the battery, Tidrow, and Bruce Kim. Ball one, strike one. That's a deep foul fly left field. Ball one, strike two. Ball one, strike two. Ground ball back of first. And Bittner makes the hand handy dandy pickup on that one. 
That's one away. And the pitcher Fulgham is up and the fellow deserves a hand. He's thrown a four hit shutout up till now. have won eight games by shutout and lost eight by shutout this year. Right. If the Cardinals hang on here, they'll be even with the Cubs for the year at seven and seven. Cubs have won five out of seven here. There's a bunt. Fair ball. And a beautiful play by that kid roll. You can't teach that one. That's one you have the instinct for or you don't. This is one of the fine fielding plays you'll see a pitcher make. Watch this now. This guy absolutely on sheer instinct and of course natural talent gets an out on this one that normally figured to be very much a base hit. Two out. And that brings up the shortstop Gary Templeton. Ball one. There's a high hopper. Well, nobody covering. On <laughs> Tidrow fielded the ball. And Bittner and Mackle were both going after the ball and not the base. So Templeton's on with a kind of a freaky hit. Watch this. The Cubs hold a convention around Tidrow, and first base is neglected and abandoned. That'll bring up the left fielder, Brock. He's hit safely his last two at bats. goes beautiful jump on the play he is safe that was a fine kid uh, the throw that kid made but he had such a big jump on it let's watch it it's a good throw that's the worst throw he ever makes kid will be around a while so Lou Brock has now stolen, I'm sorry, Templeton, has now stolen his 22nd base of the year. He's been shot down eight times. Lou Brock, the batter, two out. ball back to first look at that diving stop by Bittner look at that play at first oh the play of the week both Bittner and Kidrow and especially Bittner teamed up for a diving play the likes of which you won't see for a while watch this one now Buckner can make this play but I'm going to guarantee you nobody will ever make it better than Bittner makes this one look at this play ladies and gentlemen here is one of the fine fielding plays I've ever seen by a first baseman in my life. That ball was past the man. And don't forget, getting up after tumbling over twice to make the throw and make an accurate throw to Tidrow, who got over there, is once, uh, oh, man, alive, what a play. The leadoff hitter now, Scott Thompson, he'll be followed by Bittner. And the Cubs need a couple or it's all over. 
Strike. Strike one. The Cubs in danger of being shut out on a four hit performance. There's a high foul ball on the play to the left. Strike two. Thompson, two for three. Outfield playing him to swing a little late. Belgium has struck out four, walk two. That's a ball. Ball one, strike two. foul out of play still ball one strike two now to Scott Rose got his fourth home run for the Phillies in the third inning nobody on so they tied the Pirates one to one Pittsburgh at bat in the third foul ball again Toronto and Baltimore now move to the 11th inning, tied one to one. Each team got a run in the third. White Sox failed in the second. California now at bat. The Angels lead three to nothing. Too low. Ball two, strike two. High foul fly. Third base, out of play. Still ball two, strike two. Cardinals have out hit the Cubs, seven to four. Well, the Cubs have been a great come from behind ball club this year. They've gone down fighting even when they went down. And lots of times that fighting spirit, that hang in their spirit, won the ball game for it. Thomas and Littell in the bullpen. Ball two, strike two. There's a base hit for Scott Thompson. Hit number five. Here's the replay. And that brings up Fittner. A big hand for Larry. Larry Bittner coming to bat now. He's two for three today. Bittner's batting average is up at 309 right now. Nobody out. That's a strike, says Manny Harris. Strike one.
That's a strike. 0 and 2. Come on, Hawkeye. Ball one, strike two. The Yankees came up with a four run eighth inning. And it's now 10 to 5 Yankees as Boston comes to bat in the ninth. There's foul ball out of play to the left. Ball one, strike two. Outfield playing him to swing a little bit late. That's too low. Ball two, strike two. He's followed by Kingman. Two and two. There's the ground. Look out for two. Hey! It went past Templeton. Safe all around. And Scott Thompson makes the third. It looked like a double play ball. Templeton just didn't get the glove down in time. The Cubs have met on first and third. Nobody out. Look at this. Oh, thank you very much, Gary. Right underneath his glove. It's an error on Templeton. Now with Cub runners on first and third. The batter is Mr. Kingman. Who, along with Smith, has 42 home runs. Here comes Boyer. Bozia must be doing a real burn. He gets the man to hit his pitch, the double play ball. So that Kingman can only come to bat with nobody on and two out with a two run nothing lead. Instead, now, they're met on first and third against him. And nobody out, but at least Boyer's going to leave him in. And we're getting a pinch runner. Delaney will run for Bittner. And Bittner gets a big hand as he comes back to the cup bench. Here then is King Moves, 0 for 3. Delaney on first. Scott Thompson on third. Nobody out bottom of the night. Well, Delaney. 10 stolen bases in 13 attempts. There's a hot one, and this time Templeton throws the second in time, and it is a double play, and a run comes across. Jerry Templeton to Oberfell for the force on Delaunay, the relay to Hernandez, doubles up Kingman. Thompson scores. Onaveras up, two out, two to one ball game in the bottom of the ninth. Oliveras, the third baseman, is up. Two out. There's a high foul fly out of play to the left. Strike one. There's one to the right of second. Oberfell has it. He's up with it. The ball game is over. One run. One hit. One error. Nobody left. Final score. 
St. Louis Cardinals two, the Chicago Cubs one. Back in a moment with a recap on the game. So the St. Louis Cardinals even up for the year with the Cubs today. They've both beaten the other guy seven times. Here are your totals now for St. Louis. Two runs, seven hits, one error, nine men left on. Full Jim the winner, he's eight and four. For the Cubs, one run, five hits, one error, four men left. Lamp the loser, 10 and eight. Even though he lost the ball game, you'd like to know that's the worst game Dennis is ever going to pitch because he was very good today. The time of the game, 218. They paid attendance this afternoon, 31,120. Same two ball clubs tomorrow. I'm Jack Brickhouse. This is the WGN Continental Chicago Cubs Baseball Network. Our next televised game will be between the Cubs and the St. Louis Cardinals tomorrow. Our telecast begins with the leadoff man at 115. Our participating advertisers in today's game were Toyota Motor Sales USA and the Chicagoland Toyota dealers, Zenith and your Zenith dealers, United Airlines, Commonwealth Edison Company, the Association of Chicagoland McDonald's Restaurants, your Union 76 dealers, True Value Hardware Stores, Miller Light Beer, Chicagoland Pontiac Dealers Association. This telecast was directed by Arnie Harris, our sports editor, Jack Rosenberg. Cubs lost the ball game 2-1. to one. Stay tuned now for the Jerry Lewis Telethon. This has been a WGN Television 9 sports presentation. Guess who's here? It's Ronald McDonald, a clown so dear. Ronald McDonald, Ronald is fun. And with him you can clown around. Uh, you're a fine whistler, Ronald. Ronald McDonald. Hi, Grimace. At most toy stores. Ronald McDonald. I love you, Ronald. A clown you can adore. Ronald McDonald. <laughs> Ronald McDonald, new from Hasbro.